what's gone on with you from last season to right now? I mean, is it a different commitment, the opportunity here for playing time? What, what has it been? Um, well, it's a, diff it's a completely different situation than it was last year. From being on the training camp deal the last two years, actually, to now being a guy that, all right, you on the team, you know, you don't have to be looking over your shoulder until January 15th, anything like that. But the biggest shift for me is just mental. You know, I, I grow every season. I learn a lot during the offseason, and I, I try to implement that into my game and how I approach my game in terms of being a professional and things like that. So it's been a big difference for me. You talk about growth in the offseason. How do you make that happen? Well, obviously working out, um, that's the easy thing. But taking care of your body, uh, you got to watch what you tell yourself, who you listen to. Uh, and I, I be reading, so... You know, I, I, I get better in the offseason. You and fic fiction guy, nonfiction? What are you reading? <laughs> Actually fiction, like, but yeah. like it's like a book like The Alchemist, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a self-help book, but it's a story. You know, it's not yeah. true, but it's a story, so you kind of can attach to the character. And, you know, I appreciate books like that. Yeah, you've played for a lot of teams, a lot of mm -hmm. ups and downs in the NBA. Yep. How much have you grown up, you think? mentally from the first time you came into the league i'm sure you look at things a little bit differently than when you first come in as a wide-eyed rookie oh yeah i look at things a whole lot different a whole lot different um and you know you go through the point of like man i wish this happened so i could be here or xyz but i'm so far past that now year seven 25 years old been through a lot in the league but i've been through a lot in life too so you know i just learned how to take the ups and downs and scratch i don't let it make or break me you know what i'm saying i just keep going are there certain teammates you've had that you've kind of picked those things up from? Like you said, you're taking care of your body probably better now and probably eating better as well. Did right. you see that with certain teammates that doing that? Um, a lot of guys. It's a lot of guys that's on top of that. Like two years ago, I got to play with Damian Lillard, you know what I'm saying, future Hall of Famer, and I had Chauncey Billis as a head coach. Excuse me. So the game I got to soak up from them is irreplaceable. Um, I learned a lot from everybody I'm around. I had Steve Clifford last year, my favorite coach that I've had, you know, at any point in any sport. So I so good game from them guys that know something and, you know, I implemented it in my life. What do you make of the roster that they have here? I mean, you know, Ben coming back from back surgery. It mm -hmm. looks like Mikel Bridges is a guy that's ready to take that ne next step, become an all-star. Right, right. What, what do you make of the overall <clears throat> roster here? I love the roster. I was watching them in the playoffs. Me and my boy was talking. This was ahead of free agency, obviously. But me and my boy was talking, and we was like, man, the things that they need on this team, I really could help out with. And the things that I got in my game will really help these guys out on the team as well. So it's kind of like a hand-in-glove fit, you know what I mean? And have you seen that so far in training camp? You feel that you're a really good fit for this team? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because the things that I do is so... I got a different skill set than most guys on the team. So uh, they, the team could use that, and my skill set, I really could use guys that the team already has. Now, you're a freak athlete. You still have the spectacular dunks? Oh, yeah, I got a couple. I got a couple. <laughs> you better ask these boys about it. <laughs> <laughs> Will we see that early in the season? Will we see it? I wouldn't imagine we'd see it in the preseason, would we? We'd have to wait yeah, for I mean, the regular season. If I get season. a chance, I, don't, yeah. I ain't treating preseason like a preseason. I'm out there trying to get to it. You know what I mean? We keep in school, and they coming out trying to win games, so I'm trying to do the same thing over here. It's really interesting. You talked about Chauncey Billups, what he meant to you, Steve Clifford, what he meant to you. What is it about, like, your connection with coaches? It seems like you're a guy that really takes that information that they give you and wanting to learn and wanting to get better. I think I look at it a little different than most guys because I grew up with my pops being my coach, you know what I'm saying? But he never treated it like, all right, this is my son, I'm going to give him this, or boom, boom, boom. No, you got to earn it, you know, and if you're out here messing around, not playing right, then you're going to sit on the bench. So I appreciate having a good relationship with my coach. And uh, it's, it's a big respect thing, you know. Um, they're not going to disrespect you, and they, they don't expect you to disrespect them. So it makes it easy to work with them. And it's kind of the same thing with JV right now. Like, he's super high energy. Super, like, he gets into the drills. He hands on. He think he still can guard. You know, <laughs> he moves his feet pretty well, but he, just, he's, he hands on, man. And... He really believes in his guys. He believes in himself. So it's easy to go out there and compete for somebody like that, you know? How important is that, sort of being in that positive space with a coach where, again, you talked about how you had to earn it, mm -hmm. but there had to be, you got the positive message out of that. Like, like right. this is how you get it done. Yeah. And that's got to be the same with Jacques Vaughn, I would think. Oh, Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. He, um, 
he do a great job of building a relationship with you. You know, they say rules without relationship equal rebellion. You know what I mean? So he built a relationship, and that way he can be a little tougher on you. You know, you'll still be ready to run through a wall for him because you know it's coming from a good place. Dennis, you mentioned watching the Brooklyn Nets in the playoffs. For you individually, how much do you want to get a chance to taste playoff basketball, and especially to do it with this team? Man, bad, like, bad. I sit there and watch. I'm such a fan of the game. I watch all the games, even though I, seven years in, never been there. I still watch them. Um, and to be able to do that here in Brooklyn, uh, I can't think of a better spot to be at, you know, and, and hit the playoffs. Um, it's, it's really just because people want to put us behind the eight ball with, with things that's been going on with the roster from a couple years ago to now. So people count us out. Um, but if we can hit the playoffs this year, I think I think that'll be major. Now I'm super excited for that. See, I find that interesting that you would have that perspective, and a lot of people do, that people would count you out. Uh -huh. I would say with the changes that this team has made, people should count you in. The game that you play, the upsides of Mikel Bridges, mm -hmm. of Cam Johnson, et cetera. What do you think about that? I think that me and you know basketball, but it's a lot of people that get to comment on it that, you know, that they just they just say things and they don't really be too informed or know who's who and things of that nature. So I agree with you wholeheartedly, but I know for the most part, you know, I got internet, I got Twitter, Instagram and all that. So I see that people count us out. So uh, that's exciting. I think the team taking that on as a challenge and, you know, we're going to make something happen.